All right, guys. So in this section, let us look at what are the state properties that we need to achieve this React Agent system. So you can see that I've already gone ahead and created a file called React State.py, and I've imported a few things like the operator. I'm I'm pretty sure that you know what operator is by now. We have the annotated class, we have the type dict, and then we have the union. Okay, we'll talk about what these things mean. All right. So this is going to be the agent state. We can call it anything that we want, but I'm just going to call it agent state or react agent state. We are importing the type dict. And these are the three properties that we need to achieve. These are the three state properties that we need to actually, you know, uh, you know, achieve this particular system. So the first one is going to be very simple. The first one is going to be the human message, the initial human problem. Okay, so for, for example, my problem initially was I wanted to you know this was my prompt right so this is going to sit right here and you know initially we're just going to put it right here and it is going to stay for the rest of the uh, process all right so next thing is going to be the agent outcome and then we have the intermediate steps as well so let's look at what this agent outcome is so this agent outcome if you remember is exactly what this runnable is going to output so if you remember this runnable so if i go in here you can see that this runnable is going to return either an agent action or the agent finish. So I can actually search for agent action. So you can see that it returns a runnable sequence representing an agent. It takes as input all the same input variables as the prompt passed in does. It returns the output either as agent action or agent finish, right? So this output is going to be put in right here, okay? So initially it is going to be none, but you know, once the LLM wants to use a particular tool after the parsing, this agent action can sit here or the agent finish can sit here. Okay. So the union is basically like, you know, it can either be this or it can either be this or it can either be this. That is what this means. But yeah, initially it is going to be none. And next we have the intermediate steps. And this is basically just to keep track of the entire history of all the existing problems that have been solved. We don't want the LLM to keep on solving the same problems again, right? So if, if there is a small part of the problem that's been solved already, we save it and then we keep it right here as a list of tuples, okay? So anytime there is a new tool call and the output of the tool call is done, we're just going to add it to the existing list. So if this does not make sense to you, don't worry. I actually have sought the help of Claude. I've just like told it exactly you know how basically I told it okay I want you to give me the exact sequence of how the state changes as the looping happens in the right sequence so this is exactly how it's going to go guys okay so initially when the application starts with app.invoke okay so let's say this is going to be the initial human prompt right so initially the agent outcome is going to be none and then the intermediate steps initially is not is going to be an empty array as well okay so in the first iteration Okay, the flow starts at the entry point, right? So if you come back to the uh, the graph, so this is going to be the reason node, the entry point, right? So what this is going to do, this is going to, uh, you know, it's going to call the method. This is going to sit inside of the create react agent. Don't worry about it. But yeah, this is going to process the input and it is going to parse and generate the agent action for the search tool, right? So this is going to be the updated state. So as soon as the React node is done executing, it is going to return the agent action. So that agent action is going to sit inside. We are going to update the state and put it in the agent action, the agent outcome property. So this agent action is going to have the tool, this tool to use, tool input. This is going to be the search term and then the log. Okay. So right here, this is going to return it. And now we are going to put the data in the agent outcome. So what is the next step we need to send it to the act node. The act node is what is going to actually execute the tool. So now it has all the data. It needs, it knows, okay, it knows exactly, you know, uh, what tool to use, what should be the input to the particular tool, right? It, it has all that information. So what what's going to happen next? The condition ledge is going to happen. Okay, it's either going to go to, you know, the, uh, the act node or the end node. So it sees the agent action. It is not agent finish. It sees the agent action. So it is sending it to the, act node we'll actually build all of this later in the graph but it is going to send it to the uh, act node and then the execute tools the tools are going to be executed and then as soon as the tools are executed the intermediate steps is going to get populated okay so 
we have in the tuple so this is going to be the first tuple in the list in this tuple in the first part we are going to have the agent action that was generated before and also we have the output okay so we have the output of the tool execution okay here it is going to you know all the output of the you know the search results is going to sit right here so this is going to be the intermediate steps perfect so as soon as this is done the tool execution is done what happens so as soon as the tool execution is done we are going to send all of that information back uh, i mean the control flow is going to go back to the reason node and then all that history is going to be again sent back to the llm in that agent scratch pad so now it has solved a particular problem one problem it has solved now it needs to solve the next problem and for that it might use a different tool right so we have the second iteration and then we have the agent reason node again okay it's going to get updated now get system time get system time needs to be called not the other tably search so this time okay the same thing happens the act node is going to execute the get system time tool and then it is going to append it and then the final llm call is going to happen in the agent reason node right so this is going to be the updated state and then finally uh, what happens the agent finish is going to be you know outputted by the reason node and that uh, so what happens the agent finish is going to come right here and it's it's not going to go to the act node but instead it is going to the end node okay so that is exactly this is exactly why we need these three different properties so don't worry about how this is all coming together right now but for now just know that these are the three properties and why we actually need those three properties okay so that is what i want you to take away from this okay so in the next section we are going to be building out the nodes okay so this node and this node we are going to be building it out so i'll see you in the next section